name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. I have previously been a financial analyst and a financial journalist. Tonight I'm going to be speaking about the Republican primary in Nevada. So in Nevada, uh, at our Republican primary, uh, we have a bit of a problem here, uh, which is the largest county, the county which <clears throat> Uh, uh, Las Vegas is in, which is Clark County, has had its election results delayed substantially. And here we see a fellow who doesn't want to sign a religious declaration because it's quite a juicy story and not exactly, I think, what was intended by Newt Gingrich and a certain Mr. Adelson. So Newt Gingrich's primary campaign contributor is a billionaire who made his money getting into Macau, which is near Hong Kong, in the casino industry, and he's now the eighth richest man in America. And uh, let's see here. Uh, so where is my list? Here we go, Mr. Adelson, number eight. Sheldon Adelson. And Sheldon Adelson suffers, I think, from something I'm going to show you um, if I'm fortunate enough to get it quickly, yes, here we go. From Texas, the Republican presidential candidate, he's getting ready to speak uh, in... Uh, no, here's what it is, okay, right now. sorry. The other freedom-oriented events. Whoops, there we go, sorry. As always, thank you for joining us. Primarily on the fifth. Here's, uh, this Michael is the Schubert guy who Ron ran the Bin Laden group. Cutmer and the rest of those people, Iranians are wholly contained their energy industry is on the downhill slide. Dr. Paul is exactly right. But if we attack, or if the Israelis attack Iran, there will be significant terrorism inside the United States because the U.S. government has, has not done a good job in domestic security, and it has not paid any attention to its borders for the last 40 years. What would you expect to be? Quite an interesting picture of Iran there, isn't it? Let's see here. What I'd wanted you to hear, uh, I think, is actually early on in this. Let's see if I've got it here for you. <clears throat> okay, two minutes and 20 seconds. That's the part I wanted you to hear. So we'll start at 2.10. ...or to the west, and that if Iran does become any kind of a threat, Israel can take care of its own affairs. Thank you very much. Because if we accept I, that, that's basically what Ron Paul is saying, and it is the Republicans who are disagreeing with Netanyahu. Th that's exactly right, Judge. The sanity in this thing lies in Israel. The insanity lies in people like Joe Lieberman and John McCain and John Bolton and Krauthammer and the rest of those people. The supporters of Israel in the United States are Israel's worst enemies. They're maximalists. They face no danger, but they want to push Israel into wars. America has no problem with the Iranians. Uh, the Iranians are wholly contained. Their energy industry is on the downhill slide. Dr. Paul is exactly right. But if we attack, or if the Israelis attack Iran... Okay, so um, I think that's relevant today because uh, Mr. Uh, Adelson uh, apparently has a very extremist view uh, about Israel. Uh, and that his view is to be essentially a Palestine denier, that Palestine never existed. Uh, and I also disturbingly heard similar quotes from Rick Santorum, uh, claiming the West Bank is Israeli and that there are no such thing as Palestinians or Palestinian land. It's pretty uh, dreadful when you think what people are willing to do to pander to get political support. Um, so <clears throat> this Mr. Adelson uh, fits into a, uh, a project I've been working on, and that project is about with certain things I've found in the media, which is basically uh, on August 14th of last year, all the networks came up with the same incorrect talking point, to, which was to say that there was a top tier of candidates in the race. We've all seen it repeated over YouTube, and there are other examples. But basically, example, what appears to be a coordinated talking point is propagated not just within Fox, but across all the networks. Because we used to hear that there were these talking points created at the leadership levels in Fox to influence elections. And then we've seen MSNBC become more and more of a machine uh, uh, a mouthpiece uh, rather than the original sort of surprising fresh air that Keith Olbermann shed. Um, 
So who controls the media was the question I was looking at. And these are our six media companies. Walt Disney controls ABC, Sumner, Redstone's National Amusements control CBS, Viacom, Comedy Central, VH1, GE controls NBC, MSNBC, partnership with Comcast on NBC Universal, Time Warner owns CNN, News Corp owns Fox and Wall Street Journal. Those are your main outlets. And the way it all seems to work together is like this. So on the one hand, you could try to trace all the money that uh, comprises this media ownership. It's actually super complicated because uh, there's so many different containers of shares that it, in a way you have to give up at the end and you just look for the people who own the shares because all shares are ultimately owned by a person. So we look at a small group of rich and powerful people uh, who control most of the shares of the companies in the world and they put those their money into the hands of these six institutions along with uh, retirees and so forth. Uh, these six asset managers of about two trillion each, some of whom aren't even in Wikipedia. The guy who ran Capital World uh, Investors um, was very involved in getting rid of Steve Case at uh, AOL Time Warner when they merged. And he's a very active guy and I'm trying to get a Wikipedia article started on him. So uh, these are the control all the equity of all the companies in the world, really. Let's see if I can prove that in this particular slide show. Yes, I guess I can. Let's see. Okay, so this is the media. Um, this is their investment level into the media. Um, then we can look here. You can see their investment level in uh, each other. So this is where it gets impossible to, uh, so here's one of the six and it's owned by the other six. So this is where it gets incredibly confusing. So you've got BlackRock. BlackRock is owned partly by Barclays, which BlackRock owns. Uh, that's owned partly by Vanguard, which is the other one of these huge investment companies. And so here's all their interests in the media, their percentage of the total public shares in the media of $73 billion I've accounted for. And then here is the same thing, all the same companies in the military industrial complex, which represents uh, these companies over here. Lockheed Martin. And this is pretty mind blowing. Whoop, what did I do? I put us very far away from where we want to be, sorry. Uh, government contractors, here we are. Um, so it's a kind of a sad statement that almost all the major companies that sell to our government are military industrial, but they sure are Lockheed, Northrop, Boeing, Raytheon. Who is this guy? Uh, I'm sure he's uh, another one of them. Let's see here. Oh. There we go. Whoops. Well, I'm not having good luck tonight, am I? Um, sorry about that. There we are. Raytheon, Boeing. Was, this is a company that makes basically software for Homeland Security and the NSA. And then we've got General Dynamics. They've actually outstripped General Dynamics, which is pretty amazing. Kellogg, Brute, and Round. But for some reason, Level 3 Communications. They're doing extremely well. So um, there you have it. Uh, so this Mr. Adelson fits into all this quite neatly. Um, so if we go back here and look at how all this works, so here's your billionaires. Their money's mainly uh, controlled by these funds or they control it directly. Um, private equity. Uh, the private equity controls the corporations. Corporations, banking and finance uh, interact with the government through uh, Ron Paul's looking at the Federal Reserve aspect of it. They also participate in these invasions of Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya. Uh, they make a lot of money from this because they're able to bring in all the assets of countries that weren't in our sphere of influence onto the market, even if they don't directly own them, they can buy them, sell them, securitize them in Iraq and Afghanistan and Libya and um, uh, countries that we pop open. Defense security contractors, of course. Oh, uh, then we've got overseas business development reconstruction that flows out of these deals. Uh, then there's uh, the conglomerates that control the media companies. 
uh, energy, uh, all of these are involved in the uh, hyping of invasion, capitalism, energy, communications, um, and they interact through a corrupt process with lobbyists who have no place in our government, uh, with public of sector officials that are seeking connections while in office and in the federal government. And I've never met anyone who wasn't looking for connections. And then we have this problem of APAC, which is, as we described in this uh, earlier uh, comment by Michael Scheurer, that Israel's worst enemy may be the pro-Israel uh, lobby in the United States because it's endangering our security um, and uh, by um, uh, having us spend all this money on this massive military buildup that we don't have. And that massive military buildup is all occurring in the Middle East. If you look at some of my other shows, you'll see how much... Uh, we are have of our military exports and uh, everything tied into the Middle East. So the bottom line with Ken Adelson as the main contributor to Newt Gingrich and being one of the top eight, the eighth richest man in the United States is it's going to create publicity for people that normally are somewhat shy of publicity, although Adelson is clearly no longer in the shy of publicity business. Uh, and uh, he has literally made the consequence of tying up the Clark County returns to look like he is trying to tilt the election towards Gingrich. They're literally being uh, delayed 12 hours. And he claimed it had nothing to do with the fact that they have a, um, a religious uh, attendee caucus in the evening on Saturday to add to the schedule when the, the very people involved in the Republican Party in Nevada said it, his wife called them two weeks ago. Uh, so the whole thing is being badly botched. And if Ron Paul comes in third when he was leading in a uh, tied uh, and above in second previously, it's going to be a little bit of a pyrrhic victory for Gingrich because of the amount of scandal that could be raised. Thank you, good night, and good luck.